Another big jobs report, the U.S. economy adding 263,000 jobs in April. The unemployment rate sinking to a 49-year low. Wow, lowest since 1969. Christine Romans with us more. Yeah. Strong number, yep. strong top line number. Anything that gives you pause in this entire report. It is a strong report, and it shows that companies are hiring, aggressively hiring. Um, when I look at the trend here, you can see we had a very strong January. Uh, February, we were worried about the government shutdown and what that might have might have meant, but all everything bouncing back here. When you look at the unemployment rate, 3.6%. I mean, these are generational low numbers, and you've got some record lows for some different job categories and sectors as well, and strong hiring in business and information services, in construction, 33,000 jobs there. And I've been watching manufacturing. I mean, if you want to really, like, look for, for something to be worried about, I mean, maybe you look at manufacturing. It lost 6,000 jobs last month, and then, and then this month had 4,000. On average, during the Trump administration, you've had 20,000, okay. 20,000 plus. So I'm going to reserve another month or two to see if maybe there's a bit of a pause happening in this manufacturing recovery okay. because of the tariffs maybe biting, the cost of tariffs biting here. Uh, you know, if you look, at some point, we're going to start running out of workers. We have 7 million job openings right now, and that's more job openings than people who are looking for jobs. So now you're going to start talking about where we're going to get more workers, how we're going to make sure we have the, uh, a skills uh, match of workers. Um, you know, the president has said this is a great economy. It is. I mean, the GDP number last week showed us 3.2 percent GDP for the quarter was great. These jobs numbers are very strong mm -hmm. jobs numbers. Uh, which makes me wonder why the president would like to put more stimulus into the right. economy. Right. That just says that those two ideas don't go together. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a strong economy. Yeah, and fight, fights uh, economic policy in general, totally. right? I mean, you, you tend not to cut rates into what is already an economic boom, right? Yeah. I mean, there's no other way well, to describe you're just, it. You're inviting a bust. Right. And you have less ammo when you do have a Absolutely. bust, right? Okay, so stay with us, okay. Romans. Let's we'll bring do. in Douglas holt -Seekin. He's an economist with the conservative think tank, the American Action Forum. He's also a uh, former economic advisor to the late Senator John McCain and the former director of the Congressional Budget Office. Good voice, good brain to have with us this morning, sir. Thank you for joining okay. us. Um, just to, to, the, to the point that Christine rightly brings up, so why then, if this economy is so gangbusters, and it's great news for the president, for all Americans, why then did the president tweet last week that the Fed should cut rates an entire percentage point? Mm -hmm. Last time they did that, 2008, middle of the crisis. Does that make any sense? I, I think Christine read the report very fairly. I mean, that, this is a strong report. Um, you know, some numbers in there that are really worth looking at are the unemployment rate for people without high school diplomas. <coughs> Pardon me down quite a bit. Um, wage growth, 3.2%, very strong. So we don't need additional uh, monetary stimulus. It's not the right thing at this time. Hmm. What is the secret here? I mean, it, let's put up the long-term trend line. And it is true that, that this started many years ago at the base of uh, the crash in 2008. Um, but it has accelerated under the Trump administration. Why, in your view? Uh, I think you can point to better productivity growth the number we got yesterday, 3.6%, is the best number we've had in years. Uh, that's the core of being able to grow without inflation. Uh, that's, uh, I think, attributable to the deregulation and the tax policies. Those are very strong pushes for the economy and for productivity. Mm -hmm. They've been tempered somewhat by the trade policies that aren't quite as good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, let me just bring up something that, that Christine just mentioned to me. This does not, though, display the pain of farmers across middle America, yeah. right? Romans, these are non-farm payrolls. Right. The Wall Street Journal had a really important report about a month ago about the record number. In the last decade or so, we're seeing a record number of farm bankruptcies. bankruptcies. Look, if you're in Wisconsin or you're in Iowa or Illinois or Nebraska, first of all, you're the Mississippi River. The Missouri Rivers are flooding right now. So the most important story for you is what's happening there in your backyard. But also, you're just not seeing this kind of strength uh, in, in farm prices, in farm, uh, in farm income. And this is a non-farm payrolls report. So this is showing all the, the other part of the economy, uh, not the ag sector. And I'm wondering, Doug, do you think... Do you think that could be a weakness for the it's the economy stupid argument heading into 2020 if some of these places that went so strongly for Donald Trump, they are still suffering and in some cases suffering because, you know, the Chinese aren't buying, buying soybeans because of his trade policy? Right. Oh, I, I think there's no question the, the president's mm -hmm. trade policy has hurt the ag sector. It is among our most internationally competitive sectors. It relies more on mm -hmm. global trade and we've seen a big diminishment of global trade. So I would worry about that if I was the president. That is a core part of his political base, and it's not yeah. doing very well right now. 
Let me ask you, you brought up uh, trade policy as it relates to tariffs, uh, and many Republicans are saying that the president, uh, unless he removes steel and aluminum tariffs specifically, yeah. uh, that his replacement for the NAFTA agreement known as uh, USMCA is not going to, to pass right. Congress. Uh, do you agree with that, one, and do you see this administration relenting on those tariffs to get it through? Uh, th those tariffs are a bad idea. I mean, I was in the Bush White House when he imposed steel tariffs. That was not good policy. Uh, it was ultimately ruled in violation of our WTO agreements. They had to go away. We're still seeing some of the retaliation from those tariffs now. It's lasted this <coughs> long. So I think the, 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 the Congress is right. Those need to go away. And they will, re uh, they will say, you know, no USMCA without getting rid of them. Yeah, I mean, just naming off the Republican senators yeah. who are voicing those concerns, mm -hmm. so, you know, usually big allies of the president. Um, Doug, before you go, this good jobs yeah. number is on top of a really strong economic growth number that we saw for the first quarter, and that's great, 3.2%. But you know, because when you dig into what's behind that 3.2%, there are some numbers that at least gave me some pause, right? When you look at higher inventory, so our yes. business is stockpiling. Yes. When you look at domestic private sales, the the smallest gain in three years so is that economic growth number all it's cracked up to be uh the first quarter was not as good as the top line i i mean the household sector was especially weak yeah. durable goods sales fell at an annual rate of 5.3 percent mm -hmm. none of that gives me great comfort so you know everything else is is sort of looking pretty good so every now and then you get a weird report and you can discount it but i'm really looking forward to see the second quarter reverse some of those okay Christine, I'm just curious because you, you speak to a lot of folks, uh, economic forecasters, et cetera. When they look at those weird numbers, uh, I even that the, the, the may fight the top line number, do, do they see signs of a weakening in the overall trend or no? Well, no, I mean, they're surprised that they didn't get more of a, of a slowdown in the beginning of the year than they thought. I mean, I, I really do think that the strength in the beginning, even with some of these anomalies, the, the, the overall strength surprised many of them. They thought that things were going to cool down a bit, and they just haven't yet. So the question is, what kills a 10-year-old bull market or a 10-year economic expansion? And if you've got the Fed on the sidelines, the path of least resistance really is just moving along like this for the next year or so. And generally, let's be honest, folks are really bad at predicting the end of oh, the <laughs> term cycle. I mean, we'd all be on a crooked uh, island. We, yeah, we wouldn't be sitting happen. here if we could do that. Christine Romans, Douglas Holtz-Eakin, thanks very much. Thank you.